Hello everyone, Wojtek here and today I want to talk about something a little bit different uh, and that is my texture created in Material Maker and how I did it. Uh, it will be a little bit uh, an overview of all the steps uh, I did. Uh, it's not a full tutorial because it will be too long and I will link in the description below a tutorial for Substance Designer in w on which it's uh, my texture is based on. So let's start. Okay, so it's worth noting that uh, all these parameters of these textures uh, could be configured in those few uh, nodes. So if you only want to change some things like, uh, you know, uh, area of grass or size of rocks, uh, you can do it here, you don't need to actually go through my graph and edit it manually. But, okay, let's start. So firstly I wanted to create uh, the basic shape of the rocks. So I, maybe I show an example, so those are the rocks I created in the first place. I started with the pearly noise, or uh, actually Voronoi noise, worked with uh, pearly noise, so I achieved something like this. And double warp is actually my own node, uh, it just uh, used uh, warp with the same parameters on uh, both texture, mainly a border texture and a fill texture. So on the border texture I use a tone step filter uh, with those values and on the fill node I use a filter on the gray and by using a tone step I can manually uh, remove some of the stones from the texture so it's a kind of filter to lower the number of uh, the shapes I didn't blend it uh, with a tone step from the uh, previous step uh, and I achieved something like this so those are all separate uh, rocks and uh, by doing uh, a morphological close um, I am changing the shape of uh, individual stones so we have something like this this was kinda polygon like shape and by more closing you can see it's this much more natural round shapes uh, on the screen right now okay so I use a buffer to improve my performance and then I do it again with the a little bit bigger uh, Voronoi noise so you can see it's like that and I blend it uh, with a normal so I blended the previous rocks with uh, the bigger rocks uh, and I actually created a mask uh, it's a slightly bigger than the uh, actual rocks so that they won't blend together with the smaller ones uh, and yeah, and I have uh, also a third type of rocks, third size of rocks and you can see it right now uh, as the comment uh, you can see on the uh, screen right now, you should reconnect this port in an older version of uh, Material Maker. Uh, as far as I know, in the newest uh, alpha release on uh, 0 0.94, uh, there is no need for this. And uh, this node creates a gradient for from our rocks, so from our mask of rocks. So. Let's see what how it looks in the on, in the inside. It uh, maybe look <laughs> like a big graph, but actually uh, it's a very simple one. Uh, basically, we're using a fill node on our uh, previously created. Let's wait on our previously created uh, mask, so that. Uh, each uh, each rock is actually a fill, uh, so we can use uh, a fill to gradient node. This is my custom node. It basically 
it uses a UV map and uh, <coughs> UV remap nodes to create those gradients on each of the rocks and each gradient on each rock uh, is randomly uh, rotated that uh, gives us uh, an ability to have uh, all the rocks uh, with a different shapes uh, uh, if you use something like splatter or tiler uh, it won't be possible so yeah mm, and we doing this step multiple times and we blend it with a darken mode so that we starting to see this those rocky shapes and this is the second this is the third this is the fourth time and this is the fifth time blend okay so we have those rocky shapes and what we're doing right now we are uh, placing our rocks in the height map so that the smaller rocks should be a little bit lower so it should be darker on our height map and the bigger rocks should be uh, lighter so I am using a fill to size so that the bigger shapes are uh, lighter and the smaller shapes are darker and then I adjust the laminance so that it looks better for me and I blend in multiply uh, and that uh, gives us a result that those small rocks are hardly visible right now in the uh, preview 2D but they are clearly visible in the 3D so so yeah that works and to add a little bit of variation uh, I am using this uh, fill to random or fill to, uh, I could use to fill, fill to random grayscale but I use color and uh, grayscale max uh, for different uh, result uh, I remap those values so that uh, I can use it with a previous resulted uh, gradient uh, grayscale map uh, to limit the top height of each of the rock so that there will be some flat space uh, on some of them okay so that's how I created the surface details and we can look that later so yeah I just uh, some done, done some tone correction on this result so we would work on a full uh, full gradient uh, space for, for grayscale space uh, and I warped it a little bit so we can see the difference uh, they are a bit more organic so that the rocks are clustered uh, together uh, with this warp I use the simple uh, value nice for this you can tweak it for your liking and then I move to the surface details so let me click on it yeah that's the result uh, and the rest is disabled Okay, so this is a very subtle effect, but you can see uh, the difference right now between previous step and the current step. And let's look inside. Okay, so <clears throat> firstly we're using those uh, two custom nodes. Uh, basically, the softness node is a Gaussian blur, and uh, with a random noise it's blended with the original image uh, so yeah uh, okay so we can see the result this is a Gaussian blur so this is very subtle effect and it's actually not an ever rock mm, but it's there okay so the rocks aren't as sharp as the original image and also we soften the s slopes so you can see the slopes right here are a little bit softer uh, and the little rock seems a little bit uh, less uh, look like less like a polygons so yeah um, then I am creating a surface detail so this, this is just a simple parallel noise with a high scale and high number of iterations with per distance set to half of the scale and uh, I just made some adjustments with the uh, contrast and scale and added buffer for performance reasons then I created a mask for our rocks and uh, I blended this mask 
with a noise uh, so that uh, <clears throat> in the um, in the blend in the next blend with the original rocks I just add the surface details in a some place like the this white ones so there's a lot of surface detail here and almost nothing here as you can see there's no details and this is a lot of details okay and another buffer for performance reasons and uh, right now I added the slow blur so this is the effect that uh, adds those rough uh, edges and shapes to our rocks and actually I also blended it in a normal uh, blend with um, opacity mask set to this pearly noise so it's not everywhere and yeah that's uh, basically uh, our surface detail node okay so with our rocks done we can move to the Mm, ground uh, height map. So I started with uh, uh, big ground shapes. That's basically uh, a noise. Mm, we blend it in an overlay and a soft light mode, and then I warped it with itself to create those, uh, you know, those clumps, which uh, combines together. And then I added some high frequency noise to our texture, so that's also very very simple uh, process. I warped uh, a noise by original texture, and uh, then I <coughs> warped it again with a cellular noise. So I achieved something like that, and then I soft blend, soft light blended it together. Uh, so I have resulted with something like this. You can actually uh, made your own noise for a ground high tech height map. So it's not so complicated. Um, also, I added a little bit of a high frequency noise, something like this. This is a really, really <clears throat> small uh, very small small uh, dots on the background uh, and I just blended it together with our hate map. So that's the current result. Our hate map is looking like that. It's a little bit uh, strong. So, ah, uh, before that, I also took uh, our rocks, I blurred them, so they look like that, I lightened them and I added them to the ground texture, so that our ground around rocks will be uh, lifted a little bit. Uh, I toned it down and then I blended it with the rocks with a really really low opacity oh, maybe maybe not so low 0.42 so it's looking like that right now okay and then I created this node clamp of rocks and it's uh, something a little bit different uh, it creates those small pebbles around the bigger rocks so it's actually uh, looks very looks and works very similar to the first one it's big rocks uh, the main difference is I'm using those uh, pre-generated rocks uh, so maybe here okay this one size mm, yeah so I have those four rocks type of rocks and I just uh, Tyler them or splatter them around those bigger rocks um, with a mask created from our big rocks. So we have something like that. We're using occlusion, we invert this occlusion, and uh, where is the white space? The, 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 that's the mask for our Tyler. So it's actually around those smaller rocks and those rocks. This is the second size of rocks 
I think. Uh, so it's very similar to the first one of, of, of rocks uh, I described at the beginning of the video. Okay, so uh, after that, so we are here, clamp rocks, uh, and basically each of those rocks sizes are outputted in this node and also blended uh, blended result here so you have a, a previously created big rocks and pebbles around them uh, and the background uh, there